Hi, folks. We're going to start today's episode by uh, smashing my Robert De Niro uh, memorabilia, all of it. My photos, my frame photos, my action figures, um, my signed um, DVDs, the bust that I made of him in fifth grade. <laughs> it's all getting set on fire. How could you do this to me? Bobby! <laughs> You fucking, you fucking piece drool. of shit. You piece of shit. <laughs> How dare you insult the president? Um, yeah, no, we're talking to Matt Christman today about uh, about the Irishman. Yes. That I and I was thinking when I was watching it, was anybody before it came out, was anybody excited for this movie? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think they're the, the people excited for it are, you know, movie nerds. Mm -hmm. Uh, people like myself, people like uh, my co-host uh, on Chapo, uh, Will Menneker. We, we we have a few directors, and we, we federate them. And when they have a new movie, we get excited. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that the Scorsese heads were very excited. Uh, but I think that's probably the it. Mm -hmm. I think the Scorsese heads are the only ones going crazy Yeah, uh, who are too excited about this. Yeah. Uh, I do love the idea of a bunch of families sitting around after Thanksgiving when it was available on Netflix <laughs> to watch three and a half hours of decrepit men yell at each other in a room. Right, right. And I wonder how that went. And also, all that ponderous, uh, you know, contemplating mortality mm -hmm. in the same room with, you know, your soon-to-die grandparents. Right. I bet that made for a lot of really fun conversations. Right, right, right. <laughs> um yeah, it didn't seem like because I, I I mean it was hard for me to get excited about it in the in the months leading up to it because it was just like the, the the images that they showed you know it was like De Niro w with a gun oh yeah stand, but he was v really old no I remember as soon as I heard that there was going to be de aging significant mm -hmm. amount of de aging in the movie I just remember thinking there's no way this will be good mm -hmm. because that's the kind of thing that will make it impossible to get into the movie yeah and it turns out that it did make it impossible to get into the movie yeah but that that was on purpose. Okay. See, that's the thing about this movie, is that, uh, I, 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 what I realized watching it is that what Scorsese's doing with this movie, is so you know he's like the all the guys who made all these movies with Al's career. He's getting up there. Mm -hmm. He's in his mid seventies. He knows he's gonna die relatively soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's in like most people do at that point in a reflective mood. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the big things that he has in his career is one of the foremost like mob movie filmmakers of all time, right? Like he made what a lot of people, including myself, think is the best mob movie of all time, Goodfellas. Mm -hmm. He made a movie like Casino that's also phenomenal. Uh, mean Streets is a mob movie, really, and that's a great movie. Uh, he really helped create the vocabulary. Like him and, him, him and Francis Ford Coppola created the, like, the vocabulary. Like you right. could even argue that Goodfellas and Godfather are like the, uh, like the dialect between those two movies is like, the language of mob cinema, mm -hmm. you know, like the like uh, the the the, the uh, ethical you start. They're both grounded in, you know, like ethic, uh, ethnic observation, you know, of like New York, uh, uh, Italian communities. Mm -hmm. But then one of them takes this sort of uh, uh, myth making route and the other one goes like violently anti myth. Right. OK. And so but anyway, so he's one of the foundational figures of mob genre of the mob genre. OK. And so. I just think he looked back and he's like, well, what did, what, did, wh who are these guys mm -hmm. and what are these movies? Mm -hmm. And so I think what he did with his movie is because he took advantage of the fact that all the guys who helped make these really like powerful, entertaining movies, these incredibly, uh, uh, like these guys who like De Niro and, and Goodfellas and, and Pesci, you know, they're like caged tigers of like, they're so powerful, but now they're old. Right. Uh, and he takes that and uses this to advantage because what he's doing is he is uh, restaging like a classic mob movie story, but he is stripping it out of everything that makes it uh, cool, indulgently exactly. entertaining and cool. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. Cool okay. and neat, making the characters seem cool. Uh -huh. it's, uh, there's this guy, Bertolt Brecht. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Yeah. He was a German dramatist uh, and a communist, and he, his theory of of theater was that if you're trying to make a point you should not you should be careful not to create too much uh endearing stuff about the situation or the characters because mm -hmm. then the audience sort of gets lost in identifying with the characters and they kind of forget what the story is about okay so his own notion was distancing uh -huh. it's like that's what he's most known associated with is the, is, uh, is the uh theatrical 
uh, device of intentionally creating alienation in the audience so that they can kind of take a breath and like look at what they're looking at. Okay. And I feel like The Irishman is just a three and a half hour long experiment in Brechtian distancing. Okay. Like he is taking every element, making it as intentionally awkward and un- 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 off-putting as possible mm-hmm. to show you who these guys really are. Oh. Like he, I mean, I would never say that the Goodfellas makes the mob look good. You know, right. they're, they're scumbags. They, 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 they're they awful to everyone. Do. Certain scenes do because they do cool shit. Yeah, yeah. And they get away with it, and that's, like, exciting. Right. So, he, he and he is portraying it truthfully in that regard, but in those doing, he created these, like, archetypes and these characters who became larger than life. And he, here is him just bringing them down to size. Mm-hmm. He's saying, this is, like, these are the guys that you've always seen me make movies about, oh. but this is the real versions of them. Right. Because, like... Uh, and I think that's part of the reason that he decided to do the uh, the de aging thing, because that means that when you're showing the flashbacks and you're showing Frank do badass gangster shit, uh, he looks it's pathetic. It's kind of silly. Yeah. He looks pathetic and silly, like when he's stomping on the guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, compare that to the scene it's directly referencing in Goodfellas when they take the fu- the mailman right. into the fucking <laughs> oven. You're gonna go ahead first, and then right. freeze frames on his screaming face right. compared to that long shot. From the street corner of this old man, kind of trying to keep mm-hmm. his balance while stepping <laughs> on that guy's foot, uh, and so like so that, he must have known he was doing that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like it, it it robs it of of the of the energy and the coolness, mm-hmm. but also I think it's a dramatic choice because all the movies flashbacks, right? It's flashbacks inside flashbacks, so it's never a, him doing the thing; mm-hmm. it's him uh, remembering doing the thing, mm-hmm. and so he's not. It's not him enacting the act; it's the old man. Remembering it. Okay. It's like reminding you that this is an old man whose life is over. Right. Like, even when he's doing a badass thing and he's being, you know, a, 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 a good earner or whatever, he's still, you know, he's actually an old man in a nursing home. Mm-hmm. He's not doing that. Mm-hmm. That's just, that, that, that is his memory of it. Right. And he's still trapped in that decrepit body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like, for like, what are the big? And then the the reason, and then that explains also why uh, Frank is such a completely. And he thinks Scorsese knew he was doing all this. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think he's been doing. He's been w- making movies for too long uh-huh. to do anything that sustain for that the sustained amount of time accidentally. Right. I mean, look at look at Sheeran's character. He has no personality traits. Mm-hmm. Like he has no. He has nothing like uh, like Henry Hill is defined by a desire to live the good life and get one over on people. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, um, Ace Rothstein is a perfectionist. You know, he knows the score to every game and he wants everything to be done a certain way. And the mob gives him a chance to do that, you know, on the on the canvas of Las Vegas. Right. Uh, Jordan Belfort is just like he is just a, a middle middle America's just id. Like what you what what being brought up in America tells you you want, mm-hmm. you know, hookers, fast car. Like he has no, it's just he's lobotomized, but in a way that we recognize because he wants what we're all told to want. Frank Schneider doesn't want anything. Right, right, right. He he's he kind never of a drone. he never does anything out of his own initiative. Mm-hmm. Even his introduction to the mafia is, hey, you want some extra money? He's like, okay, right, right. Uh, you want to kill some people for us? Uh, I guess. Oh, you okay. Uh, he just does things. Uh-huh. He has no inner drive. And like one of the big um, things that make the mafia look so good in those Scorsese movies is the freedom that it offers you, right? Like mm-hmm. in Good- Goodfellas where he goes, all those guys, uh, you know, working, working stiffs, they're dead. And, there's, and the, the, that's why the most famous moment is the going into the, going into the Copa where they yeah. spend the money and they go around the – they don't have to go in line with all these idiots. Right. There weren't uh, any scenes like that in this movie. There's though. nothing. And there's no food and there's he no He doesn't like, get anything out of it. Yeah, yeah. He gets yeah. a shitty right, right. dark house. Right. And he gets like a fucking a testimonial him. dinner. Yes. A t- kids who hate him. Mm. He never gets to enjoy anything. And even if he did, you wouldn't know why he would enjoy it because he doesn't appear to enjoy anything. Anything, yeah. He's he's just an automaton. Right. He's just a, a wind up doll. And that's also why he has no like he 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 just stutters and stammers and, and can't form a complete sentence and has no uh it's, it's totally inarticulate, mm-hmm. which these guys are. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the, one of the biggest lies of mob movies is whenever they get off, like, a good bomo or, like, a, a nice turn of phrase. Yeah. I mean, if you, I'm sure you've looked at some of, like, if you look at, like, mob wiretaps, 
they're just they're brain dead. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. they're just like, oh fuck, oh that guy, he comes around here again. I swear to God. Yeah, yeah. he comes around and they'll just repeat themselves over and over again. I swear to God, mm-hmm. he comes around here again. And then everybody else has to like respect this person. Exactly and, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so he's just stripping all everything that makes the mafia or that lifestyle look in any way uh, intriguing. He just strips it out, mm-hmm. and he just leaves what's left, and yeah. that is this. Man just grimly following orders, right. murdering people, finally betraying like one friend he had in the whole business, yeah. and then having his family turn on him and then dying alone. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, that's the reality of this. Yeah, it makes it makes the 60s not look like they were very fun. It's Mm-mm. very, the way it looks, it's very flat and yeah. gray and kind of like, yeah, know, everything people like, enjoy themselves. And like when they're in like the mob, uh, you know, steakhouses and stuff, it's just like a bunch of quiet guys mm-hmm. just grimly eating meat yeah nobody's having fun the no no scene like when tommy is like busting the balls you know and uh and the how am i funny none of that just right. like just quietly eating like it's like they're already at a nursing home yeah because the whole movie really does feel like it's frank sheeran putting on a play of his life with his fellow nursing home residents mm-hmm. like he's like hey everybody i wrote a thing can we all perform it okay yeah yeah, I think I definitely took it at face value too much. I, I didn't really. Um, yeah, but the I thing is, is that that's why, as much as I respect what he's doing, mm-hmm. I'm never. I'm probably not going to watch it again mm-hmm. uh, anytime soon. And I'm not. It's not going to become like one of my favorite Scorsese's mm-hmm. because it's it's kind of not designed to be. Yeah, uh, is, is Goodfellas your favorite Scorsese? I think it is. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it is. What's your number two? Uh, I really like I really like Casino and I love Wolf of Wall Street. I think okay. that's uh, a phenomenal movie. I really like you know like the it's a cliche, but I really like his big sprawling like just an asshole being an asshole. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny that like woke people are mad at the Irishman now yeah. because this movie because you know Anna Paquin didn't have enough lines yeah, or anything. Any lines. But this is a movie that doesn't have the danger of doing what those other movies did, which mm-hmm. is was uh, during that whole awful brain killing argument about like Scorsese versus Marvel all the Marvel people who have the, you know have been ne- have been trained at this point to have the brains of babies mm-hmm. and only want entertainment that tells them explicitly what's good and what's bad good and so bad, they don't get yeah. confused yeah, they're like yeah. those those Scorsese movies yeah it's almost like he's kind of agreeing with them and he's like yeah this is this is just going to be didactic i'm going to show you what it's really like but there's a lot of moments of like real heartache in it just because you see the like the absolute emptiness of the whole thing and 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 how all of this violence is for absolutely no reason right. and it doesn't do anybody any good like the fact that everybody shows up gets a little thing telling you how they died mm-hmm. this like none of this, this is all going to end it's just kind of like a footnote yeah, yeah it's, it's like, like all these guys deal. are going to be done for and all this doesn't mean anything mm-hmm. uh and and that's that like he's just he's contextualizing his entire film up put output uh, on the subject of the mob right i saw something funny it, it, it's funny you mentioned people uh yeah having that type of brain where they want everything in like that's clear cut somebody shared something about there was an article about how like joe pesci told louis ck to stop doing stand-up <laughs> and <laughs> he was like i don't think your stand is very good <laughs> and uh and then somebody uh uh and then, like, somebody shared that, and they were like, wow, Joe Pesci remains undefeated. <laughs> like, they were painting, of like, because Joe Pesci's Cause he's the, the good guy, king, yeah. And, yeah, and Louis the bad guy. Yeah. But, but I mean, Louis's a great stand-up, number one. And then, number two, Joe Pesci also told Louis that you should never eat pussy. He was like, you should never <laughs> go down on a woman. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I felt like sharing that, because yeah. people, are, people are just so funny nowadays. And that's, I mean, I feel like that's affecting a lot of what gets made now there's oh, yeah. not really any more there's not any nuance have you been wa- have you seen um vice principles oh yeah so i've been working my way through that and i i googled some reviews of that and uh one of them was of course like how it's like disturbing and it's you know we do we really bit, need more portrayals yeah, of yeah, yeah. white male desired entitlement during the trump era yeah. it really was Tr- trump being president broke a lot of people's it brains broke a lot of people's brains it told yeah. them it, because they lost all power and they thought they had it yeah and it's so funny because you would think that Trump winning in the face of the universal uh, opposition of basically the whole news media uh, and all of Hollywood and culture band- banded together. Mm-hmm. Joss Whedon did an anti-Trump ad. I don't mm-hmm. know if people remember this mm-hmm. uh, uh, in 2016, um, and, then, and it didn't work. Mm-hmm. And that really should have told them, oh, these 
these buttons you think you can press, yeah. they don't really do anything. Hey, I don't think Lena Dunham's rap really worked either. <laughs> it did not. The pantsuit rap didn't I, help. Yeah, yeah. But because there's no other alternative, because they can't conceive of politics as anything other than that, mm-hmm. and it made them go insane and just hit the button harder. Mm-hmm. You know, like they're little rats in the Skinner box, and they're just waiting. Like, if they just break that fucking tab off of the wall, eventually the food pellets can come down. But yeah. I'm afraid it's not. How come none of them are embarrassed? Because you don't... Because... Ha- uh, because that's been excised from people, I think. Yeah. I think that's true of everyone. Like, that's also true of MAGA people. Uh-huh. And, like, the guy who filmed himself smashing his, his, his De Niro. Mm-hmm. Like, why aren't you embarrassed? Yeah. You know, like, I remember I watched, um, I don't know if you're aware of the Deplora ba- Bells. You know about the Deplora Bells? No. They're these three women, like, s- s- classic, like, exurban Texas psychopath wine moms mm-hmm. who have a band called the Deplora Bells. Where they sing about you know Trump, and they wear cowboy boots, and one of them sings, and the other ones like move their head back and forth, and they were on. They actually got. They started on you on like Twitter. They would just put little videos on, and they eventually got on Fox News, and they were on there, and they were performing their show, or their little song, and I just was watching it. I thought this is so deeply embarrassing mm-hmm. that the idea that anyone would like this, mm-hmm. that no one would watch this and think like. Oh, how did I get to the point where I'm watching this and thinking it's good? Yeah, and that's because no one has that anymore. Yeah. No one has a sense of 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 uh, of, of shame mm-hmm. because everybody feels like they're in the battle, right? Yeah, like we're all culture warriors all yeah, the time. Right. So there's no room for that because right. that gives an inch to your enemy. Right. So you have to double and triple down on everything. So you're like, no, I love the Deplora Bells. Fuck you. I'm yeah, gonna yeah. get their album. Right. 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 Instead of being like, come on, dude. You do have to double down. You got to double down on everything because yeah, if you yeah. admit that's kind of wrong, that's kind of cheesy. Yeah. If you admit, oh, maybe then you've lost. They won. They mm-hmm. beat you. And mm-hmm. you can't have that. Mm-hmm. So everyone's just like tripling and quadrupling down on their stupidest belief. Right. It's amazing. Do you think that's why comedy sucks so bad now? Because anything that's a little bit like unfiltered or maybe a little bit mean or, or you know, whatever is like too reminds people of Trump too much. I mean, I feel like the problem really is, is that is that people have decided that what they care about in comedy and both sides is less the comedy than who it annoys. Yeah. So like, yeah, you have the people who have decided that mean comedy is bad because of Trump. And so then they're just going around being evangelists for the shittiest non comedy on earth. Like every few days, there's a fucking Twitter thread by somebody. They post some awful TikTok from some freaking zanned out teenager yeah. where they're just like, Oh, when mom says that it's pop tart time, and they go, see, the key teens are doing good, wholesome right, comedy right, right, that right, doesn't right, right, involve right. being to, mean to people. You don't it's have like, to defend anyone. Yeah, that's yeah. dog shit. It yeah. sucks. But then other, it seems like for other people, they've decided, oh, the point is to be offensive. The mm-hmm. point is to upset people. And that's, that's so easy and lazy, too. Like, if yeah, you don't yeah. care about it going on SNL, you really have, like, trick the thing like oh i could be successful as long as i can get some people pissed at me mm-hmm. doesn't matter how bad the material is mm-hmm. so it seems like yeah the culture war is eaten and everybody's uh, aesthetic sense mm-hmm. and all it's left them with is this stalinist need to see if what they're pursuit consuming checks the right box or not either mm-hmm. way mm-hmm. it's it's pretty grim yeah it sure is you th- do you see it do you see it getting uh getting better anytime soon or reversing i mean even if trump's a one term president i mean i honestly do feel like the whole trump brain sp- i mean because it is if you think about it like we are in a in a real sense have been and will be for at least the next year like living in this man's head mm-hmm. and his head is just this dusty attic <laughs> filled mm-hmm. with you know chocolate wonderfalls and pinned up Cheryl Teague's posters and just resentment Mm -hmm. and and uh, and total senility. And so we're all kind of turned into like seen. We're all like Trump now. Yeah. We all just have his brain. Even if we hate him, (laughs) he's still we are still all living in his brain. And if he were to leave, uh, I mean, I think that could help. Mm -hmm. I think it it depends on how. Mm -hmm. I mean, like. Kamala's gone, but like if Kamala had beaten him yeah, on, a, her. on a on a on a on like a uh, if Kamala had beaten Trump on like a wellspring of of you know uh, of slay queen gifts or whatever, then people would feel like oh we did it mm-hmm. this works this actually does work mm-hmm. uh, I don't know I mean I I have a naive faith that uh, that Bernie can kind of uh, get in there and just take a lot of that shit off the table yeah. Because he doesn't have any interest in talking about it, and of course the right's still going to talk about it. I mean, it's they're what they actually care about. Sure. Uh, but it feels like if you don't have 
another side willing to to make to tease off the same stupid arguments mm-hmm. that it's harder for them to get traction mm-hmm. for, with the non-committed maniacs. So I don't know. I, I I feel like I feel like if Bernie got in there, we wouldn't all be back at brunch, but we could at least stop obsessing over you know representation mm-hmm. in Marvel movies or whatever because there would be actual arguments to be had. Right. But we'll see though. Well, there's no little people in Marvel movies. That's true. There's also no like. There's no day laborers. That's true. They're nope. very underrepresented. Uh, there's nope. people who are actually not represented in anything. That's true. Unless uh, they're in like a Steven Crowder video. Yeah, there's only disabled there's in the Marvel movie. I mean, they're all extra abled. They've right. got super able abilities. I guess Professor X is technically. Yeah, he's in a wheelchair, but he also yeah. can like c- control the minds of everyone on Earth. I I'd, mm-hmm. tr- I'd make that trade. Yeah, I think sounds I pretty too. good. I mean, yeah. he literally does in the movies at least. He has a medicine that will make him be able to walk, mm-hmm. but it prevents him from doing his mind control. Yeah. And so he doesn't take it. Would you get Down syndrome if you could control <laughs> people's minds? <laughs> well, what am I going to do, though? Yeah. I'm going to get him to bring me chicken nuggets until I die? <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Doesn't sound, that, sounds, that doesn't sound good. You could just get Elmo to come to your house every Honestly, day. Honestly, I think I'd take the Down syndrome just because they seem really happy. Mm-hmm. Like they seem to be way you happier. You don't even want to control anybody. Why? Mind, w- really. Why would you want to do anything? It seems like they are. They. I mean, obviously they are just happy. Yeah. But it seems like they have a baseline more happiness mm-hmm. than regular people. Yeah. And so yeah, just give me that. Yeah. Just give me that. Nice. I mean, can imagine like you work at a Burger King or something, mm-hmm. and you can't wait to go to work every day. Yeah. Like it's fun. Yeah. Like cleaning the tables and stuff is makes you feel a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. How great would that be? Yeah. I know. I think about my brother too. He people are always like buying him snacks and you know yeah. taking him places. And, yeah, yeah. you get to go awesome. on outings. Yeah. Um. So so that's that's also they fuck all the time. They fuck like crazy. They fuck each other. They nonstop. fuck each other, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't think my brother does, but <laughs> he's got autism. But Down syndrome people, yeah. Oh yeah, no, they are DTF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're down to fuck. <laughs> You go to a group home. There's just a there's just sticks everywhere. Yeah, there's a fucking disco ball. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nothing. It's nothing but uh, bean bags, mm-hmm. bean bag chairs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a great lot. Li- it's almost like the same thing with the X. It's like reverse X Men. Yeah, X Men is like if you could not be a mutant, would you? Exactly. This is like if you could make yourself have Down syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Would you do it? Yeah, yeah. hang out in the group home for sure. Yeah, perfect. Um, well, let me ask you this. So what do you think is like, cause I, that's, that's interesting that, that you, um, that you thought this was all a conscious thing. Cause I, cause I watched this movie and I was like, this is like a bummer. Everybody's so old and you yeah. know, like Pacino doesn't seem like he wants to be there. Yeah. And, um, but, but, uh, I, I, I like, I guess my question is like, what do you think the future of these movies are going to be? Should they keep making movies about the mob or do you think that's over or like because because i what i was thinking was it'd be fun to watch a movie like this but it's about like isis <laughs> so, so. <laughs> it's like the good it's like goodfellas but they show you mm-hmm. why it's or why people join yeah i don't know r- other kinds of well I, I i guess the mafia's not like a radical group yeah but there is that community and it's no like it's th- actually a lot of similarities mm-hmm. uh i mean like there's a lot of political um um structures not just in radical islam that that are organized very much in a similar to the mafia like i'm reading i'm going to be on another podcast to talk about this uh that book about young stalin Uh and when stalin was a young bolshevik in uh, the caucasus he basically ran a mob Mm -hmm. like it was for the bolshevik party and the money went to he's pretty hot too right he was an attractive man but he had a lot of uh he had small parks he had a lot of small park scars Okay. So y- you'd have to you'd have to put up kind of an Edward James almost thing, mm-hmm. but but he ran a mob like they robbed banks, mm-hmm. uh, they kidnapped rich people, they extorted rich people and companies for uh, for protection money. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did everything that the mob does, uh, but it was political. Right. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, organizations that have that same structure and and like basically the same uh, activities as did, the they, did they justify it as sort of like a, a means to an end kind of thing yeah like yeah you know we're doing this for the revolution so everything's acceptable but of course a lot of those people who started who got attracted to that like they were actually attracted to the lifestyle mm-hmm. you know like they're actually well, i just read a quote in the book from stalin where he's like uh you know it's good that we have to keep doing this until the revolution because if otherwise you'd have to go be like a normal person 
Yeah. And it's like, that sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think that, like, that idea, especially of, of, of uh, I, don't, I think there's still room to be done in, in examining, like, masculine, you know, underground spaces like that, or like mm-hmm. ISIS. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like the mob movie, the specific context of, like, the American Italian mafia, yeah. uh, I kind of feel like the Irishman kind of ended it. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. I feel like that is the capstone. Because, like, what are you going to do now that's not going to, because, like, Every, most mob movies post Goodfellas are kind of sad copies, mm-hmm. but at least they're you know they're copying a model that like uh, that presupposes that there's something interesting about these people. <laughs> right. Like the 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 Irishman's final verdict is, is that these people are empty. Mm-hmm. They're hollow. They have nothing interesting about them. Mm-hmm. They have nothing redeeming about them. They are just sacks of of just. Uh, of desire and and other people's ideas they have no real even they don't even have will um and i think that that uh, that's hard to forget it's gonna be hard for me to forget the next time like somebody tries to make me care about some awful goombas Mm -hmm. like sitting around and eating uh eating the gravy and planning (laughs) uh, planning a caper or something right 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 yeah you can yeah we know too much about like what it really is um do do women have any spaces like that where it's like uh, they get together and do? Bad I'm shit? sure they do, but yeah. they keep them a secret. From they us. should make one about like the Hillary campaign or something. Well, I guess like the closest thing uh, that's uh, was. Did you see Hustlers? Uh, no. Hustlers is very self consciously an attempt to take the Scorsese model mm-hmm. of like showing the inside of like an all male underground space okay. and doing it for women. Okay. So I think if you're interested in that as an idea, you should absolutely watch it. Okay. Uh, I, it is very derivative of Scorsese yeah. and, and Paul Thomas Anderson too, uh, but there's good performances. It's worth watching. Uh, and it is most interesting, yeah, to just see the gender flip mm-hmm. on that same concept. Mm-hmm. Because, like, yeah, they're doing a criminal enterprise, but it's all chicks. Yeah. So the energy is much different. And, like, there's the same – it's very interesting because, like, there are the same beats – you know, mm-hmm. as there are in a mob movie about, you know, uh, oh, she got sloppy over time or, mm-hmm. you know, she trusted the wrong person and then the betrayal right. to the cops. But it ends on a completely different note. Uh-huh. Uh, and I think that that... It's got a happy r- ending. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because it, it takes female friendship seriously. Right, right, right. It says, like, that that's a real bind- bonding thing mm-hmm. as opposed to mob movies which say that all of these relationships are completely transactional. Right, At the end right, of the right. day, none of them mean anything to these guys. Right, right, right. Which the Irishman is really, I mean, it, the whole point is to lead to Hoffa getting offed on because mm-hmm. all his life he's just taking no orders. And he takes orders from two guys to give him opposite orders. And he's like a robot. Mm-hmm. Like, what do I do? I don't know. And then he ends up killing the one guy who, like, uh, you know, actually kind of treated him like a friend as opposed to an underling. Right, right, right. Um, let me ask you this, though. If you if you were going to write one of these movies, have you ever thought about writing one of these movies? Or if you did, what some of the elements would be? Or, like... Uh, I mean, yeah. Like, if I was, I, if I was going to write um, about the mob... Um, I would want to write about the mob in the rela- I would I would want to write about the mob and the connections to intelligence which they talk about in The Irishman mm-hmm. uh where he's got to f- take the guns to David Ferry. Yeah. Uh and then to the CIA uh which is very funny cuz you've got uh Joe Pesci describing David Ferry a character he played in JFK. Mm-hmm. Nice metatextual element there. Um and and like the whole, like we've talked about it on a previous episode, like the entire intertwining of uh, the mafia and uh, the U.S. intelligence after World War II is fascinating. Not just in the U.S., but in Italy too. Like they fixed, they helped fix the forty-eight election, and they did like they helped do like false flags. Did and the CIA did that? Well, in coll- in colluding with the mafia, mm-hmm. like they, um, and 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 even before that, there was a, in nineteen forty-seven, there was a massacre in sicily of uh of uh communist party peasant members okay at a may day celebration by like a local bandit chieftain who'd been made a deal with the local mob boss and politicians that they if they shot these people that they'd get uh like a pardon or something okay uh so that would be interesting to do but yeah like i feel i i mean i obviously don't feel culturally uh qualified to get into the the, yeah. the cultural dynamics within it 
just like as a subject matter, it's pretty interesting. Um, I think there's a deleted scene in Godfather 2 where there's some sort of like communist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the reference to that massacre. Okay. Oh, okay. Because I remember watching it. I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, that's though. like they show a bunch of guys singing like a s- communist song and they're waving the, the hammer and sickle. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they were going to a, uh, uh, to a May Day rally where they all just got ambushed. Okay. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah, bummer. Um, but I feel like. Yeah, the. I don't know how you make a mob movie after The Irishman now. Uh, I feel like it's 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 really is the and I feel like that's him like ma- exercising his prerogative like I'm Martin mm. Scorsese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am literally He's the like, guy. See, I tried. <laughs> I invented okay. this fucking genre basically, you know, uh-huh. uh, and I am passing judgment. Yeah. So like, how do you how do you say I understand that Marty, but I've got I've got my own take. Yeah. Here. I mean, one thing that I was thinking is that, like, maybe if you, you like you make something, you focus more on their relationship with labor, and you show it through the lens of like just a random, you know, carpenter or roofer or something that sort of gets. Did you ever see uh, the, uh, Hoffa? No, Hoffa's a very interesting movie. Hoffa, okay. directed by I know Danny on the DeVito. waterfront is kind of like that same yeah. type of thing. But uh, Danny DeVito directed it. Yeah. And it stars uh, Jack Nicholson as Jimmy Hoffa. And they actually give him the makeup to give him the, the nose. So he actually does kind of look like Hoffa as opposed to Pacino. Okay. Uh, which, by the way, that's – I finally understand cultural appropriation arguments because mm. Pacino could not be more of a fucking New York Dago in this movie. Yeah. And Hoffa He's was a Irish. squarehead Irish German guy right, right, right. from Indiana. Right. I'm sorry. They really I, did erase Irish people. They in this erased movie Irish a lot. people. They erased Germans. I mm-hmm. felt like my people aren't being represented. Mm-hmm. Pacino, he made that you? incredible German. You're German yeah. ger- uh, from Wisconsin. He made that pathetic attempt to do an accent, the Chicago accent, for like the first, just in the just, first conversation. The first, yeah. Where he's like, "You want to be part of that history?" And then he's like, "Ah, fuck that." Yeah, yeah. But I, once again, I, I think in the context it makes sense because you're not getting Hoffa. You're getting Pacino because this is a mob movie, mm-hmm. and that's all you get. Like it hollows out meaning. It like it, it destroys meaning and replaces it with reference. Mm-hmm. So you gotta have Hoffa or you gotta have Pacino in there. But anyway, uh, the the Hoffa movie with Devito yeah. is a very interesting and nuanced movie because I'd say I would say that on balance Hoffa was a bad thing for American labor, uh, okay. uh, and his organization has been a negative impact. Uh, I mean they have. Because it's like the worst of business unionism, where like you get the good deals, you get the good contracts for your guys, mm-hmm. and then you're like, all right, we're set. Yeah, you know? and then you, you fuck it up. You, yeah, and you give the mob the access to the, the pension fund and all that. Uh, but like the reason it started is because the mob was busting up u- uh, strikes right. on behalf of the bosses. Okay. And Hoffa said- the, the Rockefellers did yeah. that in the Carnegie- Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the ho- and Hoffa goes, hey, you get on our side- you bust heads with us. Yeah, okay. And then you can get like in on, on, on the take once, you know, like the hijackings and the punch and fun and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And in the short term, it worked. It like changed the balance of power and like the leverage that the Teamsters had significantly and helped them win. Mm-hmm. But then in the long run, it poisoned them. And that's really the story of the American labor movement in the 20th century is making decisions that in the short term looked very smart and were, you could even argue, necessary. Mm-hmm. But that over time just ended up fucking you. Like the other big one around the same time is when the CIO, under pressure of the Red Scare, kicked out all the communists mm-hmm. from all the big unions that were in the CIO and then ended up going rejoining the AFL. And that looked like a necessary step, right? Like... This is the McCarthy era. Everyone's terrified of communists. Mm-hmm. We can't have communists in these unions if we want to effectively represent our members. Mm-hmm. But then that meant that when uh, the industrialization happened, when the um, when the bosses decide to rescind the unilaterally rescind the uh, truce that they'd signed with organized labor after World War II there was nobody left to effectively fight it because the union was now just filled with bureaucratic. Right, uh, fat heads and time servers like fucking George Meany and stuff, and they had no, they had no organizational uh, memory or heft or ability to to resist it. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the time, you can't argue really with the decision in the moment. Same thing with Hoffa. It's like sure. it's it's the tragedy of American labor that they never they got a position of where they were able to extract unprecedented demands. But nobody really understood how how tenuous it was, mm-hmm. how it was really all dependent on this incredibly 
uh, unlikely situation of an entire world needing manufactured goods and thanks to a recent world war most of the countries in the developed world being bombed to shit right and the united states being the only place that was still yeah. intact to actually provide all of this manufacturing to the world and that created this unprecedented amount of profit which in that time it made more sense for the bosses to be like all right we'll just make a deal with you guys because mm-hmm. there's so much money here there's so much right but then the margins started to skin as other countries got more, uh, uh, got came out of the World War Two, Germany and Japan, and uh, there was just by the end of it, the unions were completely hollowed out. Yeah, if you don't mind me asking, like, where did you learn about, um, I guess labor history? Because I, I feel like I'm like so new to it, and they don't, they, I mean, in school they teach you a little bit about it. Yeah, but they never really explain like just the dynamics. Oh no, no, uh, like if you want to learn about labor history, you really have to. Like make it uh, your business to like find out because yeah. it's not going to be in any any survey of American history. It's mm-hmm. not going to be in most uh, entertainment or you know documentaries or anything. Mm-hmm. So it's it, you got to like read on it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like there's 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 a number of, of good uh, um, volumes on the American labor movement and history. Uh, but yeah, it's it is it is. Well, I mean, like in anything, the history that America tells itself. Like lab, like labor relations are always subsumed. Like mm. the actual reality of like a like labor. It was fine. Yeah. yeah. Or, or just like it, it was an organic relationship that you know, not a conf, not a conflict, not not an inherently adversarial relationship. Mm. But like I thought that was those. I like those scenes in the in the Irishman where you, the guys would go in front of the union lawyer, and he'd be like, you know, they can only fire you for this. Yeah. But of course, that just makes it look like an excuse, a way to steal. Right. You know. There are three, I will say there are three things in the movie mm-hmm. that I don't get. Okay. Decisions that I do not, that I don't see how they play into this like Brechtian distancing mechanism. One of them is just sort of a nitpick and it, and it annoys me, is that they show everybody's name and then they show how they died, except Bobby Kennedy. I think that would have been so great if right. they were like Robert F. Kennedy <laughs> shot at the Ambassador Hotel 1968. I thought that would have been good. Uh, the other one is that they they reenact the shooting of Joe Colombo mm-hmm. without saying without who he saying, is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At all, and I was paying attention. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. are they oh, going to say it like ba- offhand? I too. I only understood it because I kind of know the story. Right. Yeah, me too. But I'm like, that Joe Colombo. Yeah. Nothing. Well, the, and that scene too. That must have taken like a whole day for them. Yeah, to and they did it twice. Extras together. They yeah. did two ver- two shot two different angles on the slow mo of him getting mm-hmm. shot, mm-hmm. and you don't know who it who is. Who it is, or yeah, or why, or what it has to do and with you anything. Assume the guy's like a big deal since. It's yeah, a right. Big... He's clearly a big deal, but like, there's no context for it, and mm-hmm. maybe he's just trying to say like, even these things, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Who, who cares who this guy is? Mm-hmm. He's just another fucking grease ball. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he he fucking got shot. Then he had a heart attack in the hospital. Fuck him. Right, right. Uh, but you know, when everybody else gets the little thing saying how they died in their name, mm-hmm. it's like, why did you pick him to give nothing? Maybe it's because he was the. Uh, maybe it's because he did a that fucking Gavone. That's why. Well, I mean, he was the. I mean, he was the guy who, while being a mafia head, founded an Italian American. Oh, Bobby Kennedy. I'm talking about what? Bob Bobby Kennedy. Yeah, they didn't say how he died because who cares? Oh yeah, exactly. Fuck that guy. He's a fucking uh, jerk. Off. But yeah, but like Colombo, he had the balls to be like, well, a mob guy being like, I think these portrayals of Italian Americans yeah, yeah, yeah. are uh, <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. Maybe it was Scorsese owning him for that. Mm-hmm. And then the real one, the one that I've just been like, what are you doing? H- having Fat Tony Salerno played not by any of the five hundred fat old Italian actors who are around, mm-hmm. but by getting Herc from The Wire. And That's who that putting, was? Yes. And they put him in a fat suit. It was Haley Joel Osment. <laughs> they put him in a fat suit. Yeah. I'm like, what is this? It's like the Italian I clumps. No idea. Yeah. It's like, is he going to just start farting? Yeah. What? Why is it? Yeah. Why are you? He's not even a good actor. He was terrible on the wire. He's one of the worst guys on the show. Mm-hmm. Why would you do this to me? Why would you put him in there? And I just like every time he was on screen, I was like, why is the, why is this happening? Yeah. <laughs> and I still did not understand that choice. I guess we'll never know. Why did Why did Bobby Kennedy go after the mob so hard? Uh, well, uh, there's a bunch of different explanations. One is that it was psycho psycho. It was a psychodrama with his family mm-hmm. because he knew his dad was a bootlegger and it made him feel bad. And okay. and it was the feelings about his father. Uh, 
Uh, the other theory, uh, more materially grounded, is that the, the fucking organized labor was really powerful in the late 50s. It was at the zenith of power it would ever have in America. Mm -hmm. uh, over 30% of private workers in America were in unions at that point, which is the highest density we've ever had. And that was a way to fuck with it. Oh, okay. Like, that was a way to fuck with organized labor is to tie it to the mafia. And, right. Uh, like the same time that I remember, look, there was an I, I found a National Re Review article one time that was just I think the title was just like organized labor, organized. Crime. Yeah, exactly. Like it's yeah, a big yeah, right wing yeah. talking point. And the okay. thing is, it's it's not entirely wrong, as we know from the team. Sure, sure. But it was it was not why they cared. Like the same time that Bobby Kennedy, as part of the McClellan Commission, was grilling all these labor guys. Uh, Barry Goldwater was on another commission about uh, the Kohler strike uh, in in uh, Kohler, Wisconsin, which happened around the same time, late fifties. It was a very violent, brutal strike. Like shots fired on both sides, houses getting you know burned down, that kind of thing. Uh, and there was a and it was a it was a big scandal, like this this really violent uh, labor unrest in the heart of the country. And Goldwater was at the same time that um, Kennedy's grilling Hoffa, basically. Goldwater is grilling shit out of Walter Reuther, the head of the uh, of the AFLC, uh, the United uh, Auto Workers, okay. who was basically the opposite of Hoffa in that he was scrupulously honest. Mm -hmm. He he uh, he kept receipts for everything. He never spent a dime of union money on anything. He paid for his own dry cleaning when he was on the road. Like mm -hmm. he was a Boy Scout. Yeah, and uh, Walt. There was one moment during the uh, Kohler committee hearings. When uh, Goldwater is getting frustrated with the fact that they're not getting anything on Reuther, and nobody, and everyone's like, "Yeah, but Reuther, he's clearly not corrupt." And uh, Goldwater kind of let it slip that he didn't really care about corruption. He said, "I I would rather have Hoffa stealing my from my pocket than Reuther stealing my liberty." Mm -hmm. So it's like none of it was about. Wasn't about it was all about breaking the power of labor, uh -huh. and like, uh, like for like having a guy like Reuther, the fact that he wasn't a crook was were they, was the more Kennedys annoying. Are, the Kennys are pretty anti-labor, I guess. Right? Yeah, I mean, like they were mainstream anti. Well, the thing is, like I said, this was at the time when the the labor movement was in the process of shaking off all of its communist members who had made it what it was okay. through the 30s and 40s, mm -hmm. and so there were still a lot of very deep com communist associations with the labor movement, like. Uh, especially in uh, the San Francisco stevedores who were part of the CIO. Like, that was top-to-bottom communists. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they didn't go out without a fight, you know? So this was part of the effort to kick them out, which was also uh, sort of gelding them at the same time, mm -hmm. was making them less effective. And Because those were their best guys, were the communists, because right, they right. actually they cared about it. They weren't the fucking fat piece of shit just waiting to get put up on the roster or whatever right 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 and it was more about the actual labor because it feels like when you whenever you look at these stories it's always like it's this giant tug of war between these powerful people but but uh the actual laborers are the ones that get kind of neglected yeah, exactly yeah. yeah but so yeah like part of the, the anti-mob uh, anti-hoffa push was just a generalized attempt to uh to neutralize labor mm -hmm. uh and it's and its ability to do anything because the mob, the the, co the 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 communists were effective, but so was the mob connections. Mm -hmm. They were able to to they, that was a, that was on their side too, and they, they wanted to pull all of the plugs that gave them any kind of leverage against uh, against management. Mm -hmm. Are there any pod are, are are there any parallels between uh, podcasting and organized crime? Do you think? Uh, you ever look at your show as like a crime family? Uh, oh my god! Where somebody might have to, you know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, there are, uh, there are people uh, that I work with who I can imagine taking out, you know, mm -hmm. leave the nice. gun, take the cannoli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, it's a family. It is. We're a family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And as long as we, as long as we maintain omerta, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. It's like honestly, we all have dirt on each other mm -hmm. that could, you know, oh nice, see us canceled. It's always good to have dirt. So we're we're all we all trust one another. Yeah. This thing of ours, this podcasting thing of ours. Right, right, right. Yeah. All we have is our Patreon dollars and our <laughs> self And our friggin' word. <laughs> yeah. I got my word and my Patreon. That's all I got. And I don't bust them for nothing. Right. Um, have you ever snitched on anybody? I haven't had to, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, I like to think I wouldn't, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I mean, if I was tortured, I probably, I'm pretty sure I would give up everyone. Just yeah. a warning to everyone listening if they ever are. If I have a secret and I've been captured by anyone who is going to use like waterboarding, I'll, prob I'll probably give it up. I just like what I know about myself. Yeah. Really don't enjoy 
not being like being in physical breathing. pain. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like breathing, so I don't know. But uh, I like to think that I could, I could, I could keep. Could it you quiet. give them false information though? Because they, they say torture is not effective because people will just tell you anything. That's true. I would certainly so. lie first, and yeah. hopefully, and just hope they believe me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they probably would. It's so funny. We all like to think that we could like withstand torture or like die in a dramatic way, where you're yeah. like, you know, like Cool Hand Luke. Yeah. We all like to think we're Cool Hand Luke, but. Yeah. I well, the mob's a great example of that. Like, all these motherfuckers jacking each other off about uh-huh. how honest they are. Uh-huh. And every one of them, almost, if you get put a real sentence in front of them, will just fucking flip. Like, mm-hmm. the only guys who didn't flip were the one there was nobody to flip on. Right. You know, like, the top, it's like, they don't have anybody to give up. Right, right, right. So, right. so they go right. to jail. Anybody who's in the, middle, in the middle, they just fucking flip like nothing. Yeah. Or, even if they won't flip, they'll fucking murder your ass, somebody, right. like, you're, who's been your friend forever. Even if they think you're going to flip, they'll yeah. kill you anyway. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Or not even that, like, just because somebody told them to. Like, one of their bosses says, you got to kill your best friend, you're going to do it. Right. Like, the idea that, like, they have to insist on that shit about honor and everything because it's so transparently fake. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, why yeah, yeah. they fixate Absolutely. on it so much. Well, it's like what Zizek says about, like, uh, about um, radical Muslims. Uh-huh. Like, if you were really... Um, if you were really faithful, uh-huh. you wouldn't care what other people did. You wouldn't care if there's like fornication on television or something because sure. you're secure in your own beliefs. Mm-hmm. You have to go and strike out because you're striking out of your mm. your under your under your own understanding that you're not right. That. And they're always the most horny people. It's it's exactly the fucking the, the Atta guys went to the strip club the night before the nine eleven. Yeah, uh, but like same thing with these mob guys. They have to talk about honor all day. Uh-huh. Because they're all a bunch of fucking totally lo- un- disloyal crooks who will do whatever it is to stay to be ahead. Well, that's the crazy thing about it, too. So, like, it, it, like it really is this this total facade that everyone's presenting. I, I saw this interview with uh, Karen Gravano one time, Sammy the Bull's daughter, and she was like, she, like, married a black guy, I think. Oh, my. Oh, <laughs> yeah. if your grandmother was alive. <laughs> Don't, please. <laughs> Don't. I know, um, but <laughs> it's a funny thing. There's a that photo on the fridge is my uh, my cousin's half black uh, baby oh, Nigerian. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful kids. Um, but anyway, but uh, yeah. So Sammy the Bull's daughter married a uh, a black guy, uh-huh. and she asked him about it, and he was like, "Well, you know, it, it doesn't bother me, but I would have I would have had to disown you because." <laughs> They would have thought I was weak. Right. So it's this weird thing where it's like none of us can show weakness. Yeah, yeah. We can't like, you know. Yeah. We can't cry. We can't let our wives have sex with somebody else. You know, like if we go to prison. My, what was it? What, what's, uh, you know what I mean? It's just this yeah. uh, whole like, it's like a big play that they're doing. Yeah. My opinion, John Sacramoni is a man just fucking plummeted. Just fucking plummeted. Yeah, <laughs> <he cried. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He cried at his daughter's wedding. Yeah, while well, he's getting th- t- taken to jail. <laughs> yeah. Just fucking plummeted. That's disgusting. Disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and then you find out that that was such a great character too, because you find out that like he's so embarrassed that Vito's gay, but then like because he's married to his cousin, but they're yeah. like not even like that closely related. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just, just, you gotta you gotta respect the name. Mm-hmm. And then that's what's so great about having all of the, because you know it, the self perception of these guys is like, you know, I I. Uh, I'm smarter than everybody because I don't work a real job. Yeah. As as Pesci, as Pesci said in Casino, if you had any heart at all, you'd be stealing for a living. Uh-huh. Uh, but I also hold a, a moral code that's right. transcendent. Right, you right, know? right. Uh And in the Irishman, it's like, no, no. You're just a fucking like, uncreative dipshit. Yeah, it just like, doesn't add up. Yeah. And they love Jesus so much. Yeah, of course. There was a guy that, like, uh, so I used to live near Graham Avenue, and there was a guy who like went to jail for like 20 years and he like found out i did comedy so we talk about comedy and i i made an album when i was like young and i gave it to him and uh and he was like there's too much cursing <laughs> <laughs> 20 years <laughs> of jail yeah 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 I mean, there was some swears in there and yeah 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 he's like why do you have to curse it's vulgar <laughs> <laughs> but i guess it i i don't know i guess they can be like selectively yeah yeah moral like that are there any um mob movies that maybe you've that you've seen that other people haven't seen or or are there any that like stand out for you that aren't as well known that's a good oh that's good i gotta think about that for a second let me think oh man uh what's your favorite if you had to pick your your favorite or your three favorite movies my three favorite i could not do that that's okay. too much uh I, I could not that's too many movies right now i mean honestly it's it's very much uh 
like I don't keep a list. Yeah. What happens is is that there's like a movie that comes out and then I'm just fixated on it and I'm thinking I love this movie so much. You still enjoy Woody Allen? Uh, I've never really watched Woody Allen. Oh, okay. I'll admit it. Yeah. I I've seen like Bananas. That's it. Okay. I never watched him. Okay. I don't know. There's something about him. Even way before any of the. I cleaned his things. basement out. Oh right. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. yeah. Was there any? No. Nothing in there. Just Sunni was really weird. I bet. Oh, no, I'm I'm stunned. <laughs> Um, no, uh, like, but, but yeah, okay. There's gotta be a good, there's gotta be a good one. I, I just, I don't want to just, uh, yeah, I just, cause like I love Goodfellas so much and that's just such an yeah. obvious normie choice. How about I'll, I'll throw some out and then have you yeah, seen yeah. Carlito's way? Oh yeah. You, you just, like, I haven't seen that. That's a good one. Uh, De Palma in general is a, is a good crime director, uh, mm-hmm. just because he's so. I'll say this. Scarface is not a bad movie. No, no, not at all. Okay, good. No. Uh, good. Yeah, like some people, you got in some circles, you're like, you gotta be embarrassed for liking it. Nah, nah. Uh, De Palma, uh, he likes excess, which is always good when you're doing crime movies of any kind. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you, restraint is sort of your enemy. Uh, I've never seen Thief, but Thief's very good. Okay. Uh, all the man, all the all the Michael Mann crime movies are really good, Maybe and I'll that's a good that one tonight. too. Yeah, yeah, no, Thief is excellent. I recommend that one. It's at night, basically with Michael Mann. If it's if it takes place at night all the time, you're in good shape. Okay. Because he's he's got the best at like just old dudes at coffee shops pl- plotting crimes. He did Collateral, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's an underrated movie, I think. Okay. Yeah. Tom Cruise's only performance is a bad guy. I remember liking it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, he makes a great bad guy. Uh, he's another. He's like a guy like Denzel, where, where at this point he's kind of playing the same guy every time if he's a hero. But mm. if he takes that charisma and makes it menacing or evil, it's kind of interesting. Do you remember that movie Mafia? That, that yes, movie yes, that was a Zucker Brothers movie. Jay Moore. Oh yeah, because that yeah. had some funny moments. It was yeah, yeah. But I remember like I was at the dinner one time, and my it was me and my dad and my grandparents, and my dad was like, "Hey, mom, you know," uh, he saw my grandmother. He's like. Yeah, that movie Mafia. Some people are saying it doesn't portray Italians very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie where, like, you know, it's yeah. There's a movie about the. Uh, there's a movie about the fucking Westies, uh, with Sean Penn mm-hmm. and Gary Oldman called State of Grace. Okay, that's very good. Uh, who directed that? It's it's uh, yeah, it's about like uh, the Irish mob in Manhattan in the eighties. Uh, so of course it's got a bunch of like bagpipes and all that shit. Unrelated, but did you watch Jersey Shore when it was on? Oh yeah. Okay. You get a favorite character from that. Hmm. Uh, I feel like the only one with any kind of like. Hmm. I felt like Vinny was the one who like sort of had some sort of interior life. Uh huh. Like the rest of them just seem like cartoon characters. Yeah. I feel like Vinny kind of maybe had a soul. Okay. So he was kind of interesting. But then Mike situation yeah. was the only one who really understood where he was and what he was doing. Right. Like what the show was. So right. I respected that. Okay. I respected his uh his grind. Yeah, the other guys took themselves a little ser- too seriously. I yeah. Guess. Oh yeah. You f- I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> fucking Ronnie. God. Yeah. That fucking gle- just awful. He did knock that guy out with one punch. That was kind of impressive. I'm sh- yeah, I mean, the guy was probably hammered, presumably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never been in a fight. Have you? Not in a long time. Yeah. No, that sounds terrifying. Yeah. Physical confrontation? Oh my God! No, yeah, thank yeah. you. No, thank you. I have no, I have no trust that I would have any kind of uh, coordination or ability. I could just see myself yeah. getting my ass kicked five hundred ways before I could come close to uh, not eating shit. Yeah, I'd rather just run away and then.